Hey everyone, this is a really cool episode as I'm joined by two guests this time and we're talking about a few things that we've all seen within the games and why we play games and much more. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, you're joining me, your host, Max Pears. I hope you are playing and or making the games that you all love. Today, like I said earlier, we are joined by two very special guests who I can see are happy to be here right now. My friend, if you remember correctly, from episode 12, Daniel Howard. Hello. So much enthusiasm. And then by my very own brother, Tom Pears. Just want to let the people know I frequently listen to episode 12 because of you, Dan. Thank you, Tom. Thank so, you. So. Cool, glad that was all the time. Some would say it was the best episode. <laughs> and that some would be Tom, you know. Just, just you know, an unbiased, don't opinion. Lie. <laughs> an unbiased opinion here. So this one's going to be a bit different to the normal kind of episodes. We're going to be talking because we all grew up together back at secondary school. And we are just going to be talking about games in general, why we kind of play games. Because I think that's important to understand when you're creating your own video games, what is it that draws players in? There's many different player models available and just chatting about the changes that we've seen within the game industry as well. You know, talking about that. Sorry, I had to move the mic because I think it's a bit too far. It's, you guys it's, can talk, it's, it's by the fine. way. Yeah, <laughs> looking at what I can see here. Yeah. That, that extra half inch is really <laughs> If yeah. anyone's wondering, we have done a podcast together before. That's a lie. We haven't. So you we can have. tell. Episode <laughs> 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 twelve. So people are going to listen. Man. Um, so this is going to go really well. Um, so yeah, we'll be chatting about a few things. So I think I'll just kick it off with a few questions for both of you in a minute. So firstly, I think what is the first game that you guys remember playing? Remember playing the first game ever. Mm-hmm. Well, that that'd be sorry. You had to dramatise that one. <laughs> I think that was covered in the question. Yeah, no, I was like, you made me feel <laughs> stupid for funny. asking the question. Oh no, it's just an interesting question. It's quite broad, isn't it? I thought it was going to be maybe the first game that you really fell in love with, or the first. We game can do that for the second game. question. I, mean, I, I don't know how it's broad when it's a closed question, <laughs> in the sense that <laughs> your first game you ever played. There can't be two. Well, mine is Sonic. Mine was Sonic on the Sega Mega Drive, which is the genesis to the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> not bitter when he says that not definitely, bitter definitely a mega drive that's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's all I'm saying is, to me um, I think for me the one I remember playing the most uh, had to be Crash Bandicoot we uh, didn't have a Sega Mega Drive or Dreamcast or whatever we were on the upper side of life with Playstation 1 oh, the Mega Drive predates the Playstation 1 <laughs> the upper side so. of life <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, only got a PlayStation One, so I remember playing that. Uh, Spyro as well was another one of those kind of games. That wasn't played, part of the question. You literally yeah, insulted that, down. Now it's first but, and you know. second. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to sip some water over here. <laughs> what was yours? Uh, the first one I remember, uh, like, and I, I remember. I don't think it was technically classed as playing because my dad handed me an unplugged controller, so I wouldn't. You know, cause any grief. It was the Metal Gear Solid, the very first one, because I remember just running upstairs and watching my dad and my uncle playing that one and being blown away at a robotic ninja, because nothing is cooler to a six year old than robots. Can we talk about the impracticality of a robotic (laughs) ninja? Yeah, it's like (laughs) like really heavy. (laughs) Like, if it gets squeaky, it's null and void. Need to WD forty. Yeah, all the time. It's a lot of WD forty. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of hate here, guys. Just saying, every time it walks away, it's like we quiet as two tons comes along on the floor. Do, 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 Sorry, he was do, cyborg. My bad. Still probably flawed. You know, don't be haters, guys. Don't be haters. So, what was your favorite game then? Move on to that. From childhood or in general? Side. Is that well? That's a different question, isn't it? Let's do both. <laughs> Let's do both. <laughs> I think the fondest memories I have from a kid was Crash Bandicoot on the PS1. Mm. I think that's why it was such a big deal. Can we just address how hard that game is? I've just got the... The Intentions. Yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, this is is not good. It feels harder now than it was then. Yeah. I feel like... Because of those crisp D-pads back on the PlayStation (laughs) 1 controller. (laughs) No, I feel like that was hard. What else was your other good one? Yeah, what was your second one? Favorite game of all time. That's that's tough. Um, 
I'm, I'm always really taken in by the original Bioshock. I really like Bioshock. Mm. I remember playing that a lot. Like, there's not many single player story games that I'll play again and again. But I think I've done Bioshock about five times, six times. Which. That's Speaks a lot. Volumes. Yeah. <laughs> did you buy? Did you buy the remastered edition? I haven't bought the remastered edition. Well, you didn't no. love it enough, did you? My, my wallet <laughs> can't handle all the remasters. Yeah, can we say how much remasters cost as well? Because I'd like to. I personally would like to get Skyrim um, for the Switch. I just can't. Yeah, I'm not paying for the Switch. <laughs> port of I guess that's just my issue. I love you, Nintendo, but if you could just make things nice and cheap for me, because I'm a poor man, that'd be great. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> What about you then? Uh, favorite game growing up as a kid, probably Spyro. Um, I just thought a purple dragon. It's pretty cool. Let's not lie about it. Um, I just thought it was really fun and engaging. You know, it was very nineties, wasn't it? You know, listen to it. It was very rad. Uh, and a great then, soundtrack. Well, it? Yeah. yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it just kind of opened up the world of gaming to kids a little bit more. I'm not saying that Mario or Crash Bandicoot didn't, but as this was our only system, I think it was a little bit more tailored compared to obviously walking into Metal Gear Solid with robots. We are like, gripping child's <laughs> tale of yeah. espionage, betrayal. I think we all agree, as Metal Gear progresses, it becomes more and more convoluted. I've just never gotten on board with it myself because I just can't get a hold of the story. I don't understand. It's because you're not committed to the several different comics that layers it. I'm not committed enough to the franchise. <laughs> that's um, true. But that's then moving on to like my favourite game, probably The Witcher Three. Uh, I just I don't know. I think I loved Skyrim before it. Even, um, but I I love the Skyrim. I like the open world kind of game with the side missions and things like that. But it's got a real uh, immersive side to it. I just think Witcher Three was incredible. Personally, I mean. I think my girlfriend got a little bit tired of me playing it after a while. I was like, Tom, you need to stop. You've got a problem. But she has the problem. <laughs> and it's called me. <laughs> yeah. No, no. So I guess, like, because we've been growing up with games for a long time and we're still playing games at the ripe age of Dan, who's 27. And at the time of recording this, me and Tom are 26. You know. Give it four days. <laughs> and you'll join me. Still so young. <laughs> Still so vibrant. My skin feels so soft. Just touch it, Dan. Touch it. Um, Wait, Dan, not there. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be taken out of context. Ah, uh, radio. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be honest. Some of our favourite memories going around to your house, Dowards, and playing COD, and then making up you know rules where you can only use a shield or a knife mm. um, and things like that. I think different games you can have different approaches to them but it is interesting how our generation have the, I have to try to think what kind of gay 3D platformers is that the right time yeah, for, yeah. Um, for them but I think also now you know you look at the market you look at um, what was that game you were playing earlier that's uh, Celeste Celeste like that kind of genre has really come about now recently yeah um, you mean platformers are going back to the 2D state and stuff. Yeah, well, that's kind of and the procedurally generated stuff, and things like that, with um, Super Meat Boy and stuff. That that was big. I think you know, challenging games are coming back because what I feel like the you know PS2 era there was a lot more easier. Some people. Well, I think in PS2 era there was just a lot more variety in terms of games because it was mm. cheaper to make games. You know, like you had you know what was known now known as AAA, you had your double A and all these crazier and wackier games because it was cheaper and I think that's one of the crazier and sadder things you see when you're growing up is the lack of diversity there was the technological leap forward as well which mm. I think played a massive part in that yes another great game just side note Time Splitters 2 Time Splitters 2 was a great yeah. game oh, I like yeah. the virus that was, that was a game <laughs> <laughs> that was insane yeah, some good ones there. so I guess like what do you think's changed with your opinions of games now like what is it that no I don't mean like in terms of I know the games have changed but you know you guys still game today obviously maybe not as much because of work and things but <coughs> what uh, what keeps you coming back to playing these games I mean I think the eldest person in the room should take this question because you've matured Thanks. so much since <laughs> well, those days being so old and being a fully fledged adult now <laughs> some would say too fledged I, I think the big thing I have with games now is I don't have as much time as I used to have or as much time as I want to have so whilst I used to love big open world you know immersive kind of sandbox games like 
you know, Fallout 3 or, you know, Oblivion Skyrim. I just mm. don't have the time to dedicate to those anymore. And yeah. I find that, not that I don't enjoy them, but because I have little, less <coughs> to invest, They're a bigger, I yeah. can't enjoy them yeah. as much. So I kind of limit those experiences to kind of one a year. So I'm doing Red Dead 2 now because I, you know, I, I bought Fallout 76, but... I can't I just don't have the time to play both so and that's kind of what I've taken and I play a lot more smaller titles now just yeah. because I can jump in play for an hour or less and still feel like I've got my fix yeah, yeah. but that's that comes with age boys <laughs> <laughs> it's so, like a refined uh, wine <laughs> in four days you'll know exactly what I mean huh I don't think I want to play as many open world games now <laughs> I think that is a, a big thing, isn't it? Now you look at how many open world sandbox games there are, and how much, let's be honest, a number of us would like to play. If we didn't have adulthood on us, you know, we'd uh, we would be playing a lot more. And I think now, in terms of for us, we all own switches. Like the stuff going back to to Dell's Cells, Celeste, you can pick those up and kind of put them down quite quickly, can't you? Yeah. You try to say Dead Cells. <laughs> no, I was like, <laughs> oh, no, Celeste. Um, the mic will show that you edit out dead cells and put in Celeste <laughs> and only use Celeste. Um, but those kind of games you can just kind of pick up and play, can't you? And there's no overarching storyline or lore that you've got to go deep into. Uh, it's like I've just picked up God of War for the first time. By picked up, you mean. Oh, I've borrowed it uh, <laughs> last time. <laughs> but um, there's obviously a lot of side quests you can do. But much similar to yourself, Dan, you were speaking about earlier, just don't have the time for that. I just mm. want to get the story and kind of go, right, done that now. Especially when, like, nowadays, and we spoke about it in, in episode 12, like, Tom's favourite episode, was that... Uh... Tom will know exactly what Tom <laughs> yeah, He's memorised it. <laughs> I could literally word. quote him to you guys, but it's just not fair. <laughs> well, we were chatting about, like, how I think video games now are starting to hit their, their prime of storytelling. You know, mm. there's a there, there's been good stories in previous ones, like Metal Gear Solid no matter how outlandish it got, you know, Final Fantasy as well, you know, other games as well. But now it seems to be hitting definitely, I don't want to say it's prime, but it's definitely starting to get into its flow and games are getting far better at telling stories now than they've probably ever been. And that's why I think you want to do the story because you hooked on it, you know? Love games? Love game design? We do too. So why not help us here at Level Design Lobby spread the word? With Patreon, from as little as $1 per month, you can do just that. And new for 2019, we have more reward tiers and even more awesome perks on offer, such as access to our community Discord, Level Design Weekends, exclusive talks by professional designers, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and much more. Sound interesting? Then head on over to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby for more information and to pledge your support today. As always, we'd like to say a massive thank you to all the game gurus who've backed us so far. It's thanks to your generous support that we can continue to grow, pursue new opportunities and bring you new, awesome and exciting content. So thank you. And now back to our regularly scheduled programme. Yeah, definitely. I think that's... A that's something that keeps me playing games is that I get stories that you wouldn't get mm -hmm. you know in the cinema or on TV and it's a chance to be a part of the world it's a completely different level of engagement you're not passively watching something you are actively <coughs> engaged with the world and the characters and it's that's something quite special I think also is the different ways that you can engage as well. Because if you remember, like Heavy Rain, you know, yeah. you've obviously got the quick time events, or you've mm. got, well, like Witcher or Skyrim, you can do certain things which will impact how you're viewed in that world. So it's just a different way of participating in it all. Yeah, and games like that, where, you know, choice based games where what you do has an impact, that itself creates conversations between, you know, groups of people because you'll. You'll play your game and then the next day at work or at school or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I did this and this happened. Oh, right. Well, I did this and something else happened. And 
it yeah. generates conversation and it gives a, an air of replayability. Well, I think it also brings us together. Like one of the best things, you know, Tom had mentioned COD with uh, with Dan earlier, but when PT came out and we all came around to try complete PT, yeah. which was, you know, haunting. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I still haven't slept. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I hate dark rooms. So <laughs> I don't like corridors, <laughs> especially L shaped ones. But pulling together to kind of solve that puzzle. Yep. Uh, that's it's something that you wouldn't get from a TV series no you know, or, a, or a film I remember the first time I played Fable on the Xbox and that had you know you could and bad counter I remember just thinking for me because it was the first time that I'd really experienced a game with consequences um, just how engrossing it was it was like oh okay perhaps shouldn't have done that um, or but it feels so good to yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> when am I ever going to get this chance in real life <laughs> um, so but that, that's it there's different ways you can approach these things that you can get in a team even if it's a single player game like PT it's not like it was a multiplayer but we all went in there and there's other things like you know we were just playing um, Call of Duty was what was it Blackout Blackout um, with their Battle Royale mode and we take it in turns to see who could get the furthest it was Max by the way sorry can we just repeat that it was I it's crazy the game dev played, played the game better <laughs> who would have no. seen this coming no one saw it coming <laughs> no one so, especially that guy who jumped through the window and didn't look left <laughs> boom no. headshot <laughs> But this is it. There's just different ways compared to the films or TVs where it's predetermined. And I'm sure, you know, like when we were younger, we did used to watch films and discuss it and things like that. But there wasn't that level of participation where we can kind of go forward and go, oh, well, you know, I did this way or I did that way. And we approached it from different angles. Mm -hmm. Um, Because there's so many, I mean, I don't know if you've paid... uh, played or watched is it Bandersnatch not yet I really need to but, no, yeah. not but there's just there are multiple <coughs> endings now I have been yeah. with different games unfortunately I can't think of one off the top of my head right now no. Witcher 3 yeah Witcher 3 um, and they, they kind of bring you back and you, you kind of think right well I want this ending or I want to do this I remember one time I went to work and we talked to a friend about Witcher 3 and he told me specifically don't do this one thing when I did it because I was like, nah, he's he's he's, he's the telling the lies. He's, he's not, not a real. true witcher. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's what I mean. There's just there's a level where you can kind of get away from your day and go be engrossed by a different world, especially things like Spyro, which are so colourful, or there's actual layers. I think that was the only thing that failed Skyrim in my mind is that the guards all said the same thing <laughs> I used to be an adventurer like you until I took an arrow to the knee how many of you took arrows to the knee who's this magnificent sniper shooting you all with arrows to the knee it's a metaphorical arrow <laughs> to the knee it is it means they got married no yeah really? that was the same yeah to, to take an arrow to a knee they got an arrow on knee and they proposed and they got married so all the ones that got, took arrows to the knee, they stopped adventuring because they had a family. I feel really bad now because the podcast can't capture my face because <laughs> my jaw just went to the yeah. floor. Because I thought that as well, and I was like, "This is just madness! All these adventurers <laughs> getting shot in the knee." Just this one guy, this lone ranger. Yeah. I was gonna say he's just some <laughs> sick guy who likes to hit and chip people in the knee. <laughs> That's the ultimate role playing game. You become that, that guy, and you just sit outside caves and tombs shooting adventurers in the knee. I don't want you to go down this path. Wow. Well, there you uh, go. you're getting taken out of the knee soon. Day. Yes, this is true. I don't think you've already done it. So, yeah. There you go. Now you can go and pass on that knowledge. I think we're just going to end the podcast here. There's nothing left to say. <laughs> yeah. you know? Is it? His greatest riddle has been solved. But, yeah, no, I think it's, it's interesting to see how it's all evolved in that. You know, Do you have any particular favourite memories of certain games or anything that will stick with you? I think of the COD mainly just because yeah. as being adults, some older than others at this table, um, that <laughs> <laughs> some closer to death than others. For those who obviously don't know, which is everyone who's listening, there's about two weeks between our birthdays. Yeah. But that's it. We never let Dan forget it. Never. So um, <laughs> but uh, facing age alone. But that's it. We, it's very rare that the three of us now get to sit down and actually have time off together and enjoy that um, part so I mean I think for me those would be uh, good times and even even when we were playing board games it wasn't just necessarily video games and God Monopoly 
Yeah, we won't go down this road because this podcast's not about Monopoly and things like that. But uh, for me, that I think that's something I always look forward to doing. Yeah, definitely. I think games have always been something that will bring us together, and it's you know it's that shared experience. It's could drive us apart not just as the well. Competition, but you know it's occasionally the cooperation. Um, you know, like <laughs> yeah, just so everyone knows, Dan's smirking at me about competition because <laughs> whenever we play FIFA, he trounces me. It's not even competition, and that's why he's smirking. He's so like, much competition. <laughs> he's there, like Tom. Why do you even try? Why do you even get up in the morning? But that's the thing, isn't it? It's always there's always an experience that you can look back on and smile about, and there's always a game you remember. Yeah, like I do always remember playing COD, like, and I always remember like playing High Rise and stuff like that. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was the favorite yeah. one. <laughs> Um, you know, also, like Mario Kart and yeah, you know, doing terrible on Rainbow Road. Who ever does good on Rainbow Road? I do on Mario Kart Eight now, but that's because you can't really fall off the track anymore. It depends like, which Rainbow Road. Oh yeah, the anti. Ah, yeah. oh. <laughs> you're a terrible human being. cheat. You're awful. It is, yeah, but it stops you from taking the shortcuts as well. So you know you pay that price, oh, yeah, <laughs> which all of us could price. master anyway. It's funny that the antenna comes off after Rainbow Road. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but that's the same with us when we were kids me and Max and my sister and we used to play first thing in the morning um, time crisis 2 or ti- I remember time splitters 2 sorry time splitters 2 I remember time crisis though we used to play that as well because um, we had the gun and yeah, unfortunately yeah, gun. Yeah, yeah and we couldn't shoot it so far away so we had to literally stand right by the TV <laughs> insta headshot every time um, but that's it. I think now I think for people because I, I do find it a shame as well I don't mean to go too political here but I know people worry about their kids spending too much time on games and things, but I mean, I think we never really spent all that much time on games, but we did go do it. We just... Well, we, some we days go. we went out, some days we'd stayed and just played games together. Like, it's, you know, just what the things we did. We didn't always, like, sometimes we'd just sit and talk in the kitchen and just, you know, hang out, like... Or play sports, because we're all incredible athletes so here. Sporty. <laughs> <laughs> Incredibly sporty. Past of a career. <laughs> I could have gone pro. <laughs> in what sport? You know. You know what sport. Apparently I just on didn't take that arrow to the high rise. <laughs> it's legit. I want to get one life, but it's legit. Yeah, there is that. And, you know, I think games get demonized quite a lot. You know, mm. games get put on as the reason for violence. They get put on for the reason for antisocial behavior. They get put on as the reason for kids staying inside and not exercising. But I think that's not what games are and no. that's not what games were for us no you know I think that they are so much part of our life think about people who just pick up their phones and play games download them out yeah. and things like that um, you know it is part of the thing it's just it is entertainment it's instant entertainment where you can just for a few minutes focus on something else um, and I suppose we've all had hard times and something like a game or a film or a book has helped us kind of get through it and just for a few minutes not have to worry about certain things and just mm enjoy stuff again because there are so many smart and creative minds who create and produce these worlds which are just engrossing and it's no different to a book I mean I, I like to read here and there I and dabble in there. <laughs> the written <original. laughs> um, but it, it's there for our entertainment at the end of the day and it shouldn't be demonized it should there are so many good things and good good friendships that come off. I remember playing uh, when we were younger with a couple of other friends, World of Warcraft. We'd all just get online together, open up a private Skype conversation and just you know, go out there and complete some quests. But that's it, isn't it? There's just, the, you can kind of look back and think about where you were in your life and what games you were playing. Mm. Yeah, totally. I think it's interesting as well as like a lot more studies have come out that your brain is very active and um, when you're playing video games and you know compared to that of a TV show or a well film. you are thinking aren't you well that's yeah a lot of them is problem solving you know and that's that's the thing uh, I need to bring out the actual statistics and studies before I start yeah saying it and Better demonizing it yeah, yeah. fake news fake news uh, but psychology of video games give them another shout out they do some great stuff talking about it so it's a really interesting one if people want to know more about that stuff they do some great stuff um, with it but I think this is where we'll probably wrap it up for us because we've all got stuff to do, we've got other games to play. We're adults, we <laughs> responsibilities to do. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I just want to thank you two very much for coming on the show. 
Thanks for mm. having us. I'm hoping it'll beat the numbers of you know episode twelve. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's, uh, so it's a big two one. episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, please don't make this one the most disliked. <laughs> Watch some guys start it now. <laughs> oh, girl. I'm not judging. <laughs> Um, but yeah so thank you all very much for joining us um, if you do want to reach out to me you can so on twitter at max pairs or email in any questions to myself or these two I'll pass it on leveldesignlobby at gmail.com uh, if you do want to support the show then please check out the patreon where we have tons of cool stuff for you guys to check out and to participate in in many different ways and yeah thank you all very much if you are listening through youtube please do hit the subscribe button or if you're listening to a podcast app please rate the podcast five stars because that helps spread the word of the amazing podcast and yeah thank you all very much and we'll catch you all next time